Hey guys, welcome to ELA with Miss Garrett on this beautiful Thursday. Actually, I don't know if it's beautiful or not. It's beautiful right now on Sunday um, while I'm making this for you, but I don't know if it'll be pretty or not on Thursday. I hope it will be because this is the last day that we'll actually see you for a week because guess what tomorrow starts? Spring break. That's right, guys. You're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. But then, you know, we can't wait to see you when you come back. Not Monday, but the following Monday. So anyway, let's get back to today's work. What you're going to do is you are going to have a passage. And lots of times when you have passages, you have questions after them. Now, as you go on through life, you're not always going to have questions after a novel that you read or a newspaper article that you read. But it is still important to understand what you're reading. We ask you questions so that we can make sure that you fully understand. Now later on when you're 30 years old and you're reading a newspaper article or you are reading a novel for fun or you're reading a professional development book later on for your job, your career, you aren't going to necessarily have somebody asking you questions after what you read. So that's what we're doing now to prepare you to make sure that you'll be able to understand the material and the text that you have to read later on in life. So today we're going to look back at one of the strategies that we've taught you. You know, I taught you last week about the ACE strategy and going back through the text and using that A, C, E. And then Miss Whitford taught you about the whip, okay? The whip strategy. I remember watching that one. That was a good, good lesson. So I know you all remember it, so I won't drag you down by making you listen to me talk the whole time about the whip strategy. I'm just going to really quickly review it for you since you already know it. So the first thing that you do when you whip is you write down what you think the answer is. Okay, so go ahead, you read your passage, and you read that first question, you're like, okay, I think I already know what this is. Write it down, jot it down really quickly. Then have evidence for your answer. Go back in the text. You can go back and highlight, okay? You can use your highlighter, highlight in the text where you found evidence to support your answer. Then investigate your answer options. Now you know, and I've told you, and I know your other teachers have told you many, many times, that a lot of times when you are answering questions about a text, you'll have a few decent answers. You might have one or two that you can eliminate right away. But then usually, there are going to be some tricky ones where it could be one or the other. So what you're going to do is you're really going to investigate those. Really look at them and see which one is the best possible answer. Okay? And then put the answer that best matches your original prediction. Okay? And that's basically how you whip when you are answering questions about a text. Now I also want you to remember, guys, that you go back into the text to find your answer, okay? Find that evidence. That's super, super important that you have evidence to back up your answer. You can't just pull something out of the sky, okay? So go back through the text, highlight, annotate. You might want to make notes along the, um, along the text while you are reading. If you come to a vocabulary word that you're not really sure of, Look for those context clues and combine the context clues with what you already know and you can jot down a quick definition or maybe a synonym, a word that means the same thing or close to the same thing. That way when you go back and reread, you won't have to do all that work with the vocabulary again. Okay, so definitely annotate in the margins if you need to. Then skim the questions. Now you can look at this two ways. You can choose to read your entire text first and then go back and then answer question by question. Or some of us like to look at the questions first and then let's say question number one says, tell me about the theme of this text or what is the main idea or the gist of this text? Well, right there, guys, I know I'm looking for gist, so I'm going to jot that down. I know that's one of the things that I'm going to look for. And then when I read, I can highlight, oh, okay, so in this introductory paragraph, I see where they are mentioning what this whole passage is going to be about. So I'm just going to highlight that right there. Okay, does that make sense? Hope so. 
I know you can't talk to me right now. If it doesn't make sense, raise your hand on your class kick when we get done, okay? Um, so you can skim those questions and see what it's asking for. Is it asking for character traits? Do I need to pay attention to a specific paragraph? Go ahead and highlight that paragraph, right? So you can go back to it. So these are just some strategies to help you when you have those questions at the end of a text. Now remember, you're not always going to have questions at the end of the text to make sure that you understand it. So take advantage of your time in school now where we're helping you by giving you those questions to make sure you understand. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn you over to your class kick. You've got a really neat passage today. It's called I Double Dog Dare You. I wonder what that's about. It could be about so many things, but you know what? That's a catchy title, so I'm excited about it. So what you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and read I Double Dog Dare You. That is on slide 15 of your class kick. After you read that, you're going to answer the following questions, okay? You have got one, two, three, four, four questions to answer. And then you've got some word work. Now, I think that this might have been a little bit tricky for some of my friends last week. So I wanted to go over it a little bit with you, okay? It's just kind of, it's a fun way of looking at the words in the text. So you're going to look for those contractions. Do, not, don't. Okay? So think about those. Think about those contractions. You're going to highlight those in red. Plurals. Dogs. More than one, right? Okay, two or three or many dogs. So look for those plurals. Children. That's more than one child. Okay? You're going to color the plurals in blue. Adjectives. So with adjectives, you're looking for those describing words like the green grass. The adjective is green, right? They're not always going to be that simple, but colors, shapes, sizes, they're descriptive words. Um, and then in orange, you're going to look for your four plus syllable words, okay? So let's think about this. Mississippi. Four syllables, right? Garrett. Mm, only two, so I'm not going to highlight that one, okay? I think that makes sense to everybody now. Um, for the vocabulary section down at the bottom, you're going to copy the five bold words that you see in the passage. They're already bold for you, okay? And you're going to jot them down in the answer blanks. And then you're going to use context clues and what you know already, okay, to define that word the best that you can. Not everybody's definition is going to be the same, and that's okay, because we want you to define them in your best way, all right? So, that's on slide 15 of your class kick. Slide 16, you've got a little bit of freedom there with some short answers. What's your opinion of the story? Why? And then a few others like that. So, I hope you have fun. And I hope this helped you out a little bit, and I cannot wait to see you after spring break.